Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. As the title suggests, I will be ranking all of the Star Wars live action TV shows. I decided to rank them uh, separately from the animated shows because even though they're all Star Wars TV shows, the animated shows, Clone Wars Rebels, they do have some very key differences and I don't think it's really fair to compare what was produced in those shows to what we've seen on Disney Plus with our live action shows. I will be doing a video where I rank uh, both Clone Wars and Rebels and I'm going to go season by season in that because as I'm sure most of you know there's serious quality differences between uh, some of the seasons particularly when it comes to Clone Wars so you can't really just rank them as a whole whole show. Uh, in the case of this ranking, I will be separating out the three seasons of Mandalorian because I think that uh, there are some key differences between them as well. Uh, one of the seasons I particularly uh, rate very highly, whereas the other is not so much. Uh, I don't think that this ranking is going to be as controversial as my uh, movie ranking, all the Star Wars episodic movies. If you haven't seen that video yet, please check it out. I've got it linked down below. I think that uh, if you haven't seen it, you will definitely be surprised by the way that I ranked the movies. Uh, whereas this ranking, you might disagree with it, but I think you'll be able for most of it to see where I am coming from. Uh, I'm going to work my way from the bottom to the top, so what I put uh, as the worst Star Wars show to what I rate as the best. So getting right into it, what do I consider to be the worst live action show? Well, when this question's typically asked, most people are either going to go with the Kenobi show or Book of Boba Fett. And I go back and forth, but I really think, unfortunately, I have to put Book of Boba Fett at number seven, which is a shame because this was one of the shows that I was really excited for. Um, and I love Tamara Morrison. I think he's done a great job in pretty much everything he's done for Star Wars. I think he did a great job in Book of Boba. The problem is Book of Boba really didn't add much to what we've seen in the Star Wars universe. It, it, it was a very, it was incredibly slow. It didn't have much build up, um, and at the end of the day, it really says a lot about the quality of your show when the best episode of that show is one that does not have the main character in it. And that, of course, is the episode where, which was basically just a precursor to season three of The Mandalorian, where we got to see uh, Mandalorian go and get Grogu, and we saw Ahsoka uh, with her little cameo, and we got to see Luke in there. I mean, that's that's all great stuff and I love that in Star Wars, but why was that in a show about Boba Fett? Um, pretty much the only good stuff that involved Boba was him fighting uh, Cad Bane. And don't get me wrong, seeing live action Cad Bane was amazing. Uh, Cad Bane is my personal favorite character that we've gotten uh, out of the animated shows. I rank him even above Ahsoka personally. Um, so, but, but other than him, say again, what really happened in Book of Boba Fett? Pretty much nothing. Um, in regarding Cad Bane, I know that, uh, some people think that he wasn't killed at the end of Boba Fett, and it does seem that they were kind of hinting at that at the end, that, oh, he's actually going to survive and he's going to keep going. And it's funny, because I just talked about how much I love Cad Bane. I don't want them to do that. Uh, I think that having Cad Bane killed, he's definitely at the end of his career, he's no longer in his prime, and to have him be defeated by arguably the greatest bounty hunter being... Boba Fett. I think that's a perfectly fitting end to his story, and I think it's, it just wouldn't be good for his character to bring him back. It does seem like they might be doing that, um, but I hope that they uh, change their minds. All right, number six, shouldn't be a surprise, is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, a lot, it's interesting, I talked about not much happening in Book of Boba Fett. A lot happened uh, in Kenobi, but the stuff that happened kind of screwed a lot of stuff with uh, the lore. I mean, quite frankly, the very fact that the show established Vader and Obi-Wan fighting each other before A New Hope just takes away so much of the emotional impact of their meeting on the Death Star and their final duel. Um, there's in, in no way what George Lucas intended. In the original, before Kenobi came out, the last time they had seen each other prior to the end was on Mustafar when Kenobi defeated Vader and put him in the suit. Uh, so to have a show where they reunite and they fight each other, it's, it's just, it undoes all of that emotional impact 
um, and, and I had problems with it from the get-go. This was a show that many people were excited for, that I was very hesitant towards for those reasons that I just mentioned. And don't get me wrong, you know, I, I'm a nostalgic guy. I loved seeing Ewan and, and Hayden fight each other, and the duels were excellent. Um, the effects were excellent. Um, but it, it, it just it undid so much of what George Lucas intended in his original story. And I haven't even gotten to the other stuff with the Inquisitors, uh, in, you know, them having the, the Grand Inquisitor, uh, you know, sort of being killed, but if you watched Rebels, you knew he didn't die. Um, and then they brought in Reva, who, again, she didn't do much. Um, I, I was happy with the way they explained Reva knowing that Vader was Anakin because that was a big concern that many people had and I remember when I watched that I said okay it's gonna be that she saw him in the temple which that makes sense um so I didn't have too many problems with that um and I was not a fan I, I, I and this is the not the first time this has happened among Star Wars fans I did not like that people harassed the actress who played her um you and McGregor said it perfectly when that happened if you do that you're not a Star Wars fan you know, these are these are actors who are putting their heart and soul into these roles. They work with what they're given, and we shouldn't be, you know, hurting them just because we weren't a fan of the story that was given. Um, that being said, of course, again, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of Reva. I didn't see what she added to the story. Um, and seeing Obi-Wan and, and, and Vader fight each other again, said over and over, undoes the story of A New Hope. Uh, and it's just something that I think we all would like to forget. Okay, number five, and this is interesting because I actually struggle what to do here, because it really is a question of which season of Mandalorian I put at number five. Um, I don't think there's any doubt, really any controversy over the fact that I'm going to put season two of The Mandalorian as the best season of Mandalorian, where I'm going to break with other people is that I'm not the biggest fan of season one of The Mandalorian, uh, which, you know, everyone loved when that came out, and I was not a fan of it, uh, except for kind of the very end. To me, the first season of Mandalorian was, uh, every episode I was watching, it seemed like it was struggling to find its footing. It wasn't sure what it was. Was it a bounty hunter show, or was it a show of him protecting Grogu? Was it trying to do both? It it almost seemed like they didn't have enough time and enough episodes to really, at least I felt, establish what they were trying to establish. And the reason I say that is because most people know that season three of The Mandalorian wasn't that good either. Uh, had a lot of problems. Again, had, it has a pretty cool ending, but at the same time, you know, they don't really do anything with Moff Gideon. You know, they built him up and then, oh, so he was just making clones of himself. Like, that's it. it, it okay. And then he kind of gets defeated and... Uh, yeah, it, it, season three of The Mandalorian was eh, and season one of The Mandalorian, to me, was eh. So I, I don't know what to put at number five. I think, I think I have to put season three of The Mandalorian at number five with a very slight, you know, ranking on there. I could honestly go either way, but yeah, season three of The Mandalorian, I mean, there's nothing really memorable about it to me other than you know, the final fight, um, you know, seeing Paz Vizsla, you know, fight against the Praetorian guards, that was cool, but again, it, it's, they're building up the New Republic, and they're building up, uh, you know, the conflict with Thrawn, because he was mentioned in that, uh, but th I'm concerned that they're falling into the trap of building up, and building up, and building up, and doing it at the expense of the show that we're watching at the time. There's nothing wrong with build up, but don't build up, don't sacrifice what you're currently doing in order to c accomplish that build up, if that makes sense. Uh, so then shouldn't be any question. We're putting, which one did I think this is? Maybe, yeah, that's the season two poster. Mandalorian season two at number four. And then there shouldn't be any surprise, of course, Mandalorian season one at number three. Now, some people might say, oh, shouldn't be any surprise. Where are you, you so you're putting Ahsoka above it. And the answer is yes, I am. Uh, like, I I enjoyed season two of, oh, I, screwed, I just realized I screwed this up. No, season two goes there. Season one goes there. <laughs> I mixed the posters up. Yeah, season two of The Mandalorian, number three. Season one, number four. Season three, number five. Uh, yeah, season two of The Mandalorian was excellent. Um, I, I mean, from beginning to end, 
you know the the getting to see all the characters come together our first live action appearance of ahsoka no way the final confirmation that we were going to get a sea thrawn uh getting the getting to see luke kick all the the dark troopers asses it, it was getting to see bo katan i mean it's <laughs> it was just excellent getting to see boba fett uh we, we, we got to see so much awesome stuff in season two of the mandalorian and it's i i, I hope that season four of the mandalorian will be as good assuming we get a season four um there's been rumors now that they're trying to maybe redo it into a movie because there's all the problems going on behind the scenes at disney which is terrible hopefully that doesn't impact uh what is currently planned uh behind the scenes for star wars too much of course it will impact it to a degree i, I don't see how it can't but uh we'll have to see obviously the story will be concluded in some way and i hope it's at the level that was season two of the mandalorian all right so now we get into a bit of a conundrum andor versus ahsoka these are two very different shows. You know, Ahsoka is very traditional Star Wars. Got the Jedi, got the Sith, the the Empire kind of, because Thrawn is, you know, he wants to bring the Empire back. Got to see the New Republic. Andor was very unique. And Andor was not made by Filoni. Unlike the rest of the shows on this list that Filoni was kind of involved in. I don't know how much he was involved in Kenobi. I need to double check that one. But he was involved in the rest of these. Uh he was basically not involved at all with Andor. And the interesting thing is when Andor was announced, I had no interest in it. Uh, I love Rogue One, and I wanted it to be standalone. I didn't want backstory to the characters. So I didn't even watch Andor as the episodes were coming out. And I think it was like six or seven episodes in, I had some friends messaging me, and I'm reading on, on Twitter, people are saying, this show is the greatest thing Star Wars has had in years. I'm like, oh, Okay, I'll check it out. And wow, it was it was truly amazing. So the question is, what's the struggle? Well, the struggle for me is this. My personal ranking, I put Ahsoka at number one and Andor at number two. Now, the reason I'm saying, I'm kind of emphasizing that it's my personal ranking is there's a very, I have to put an asterisk next to it. I can only do this ranking in good conscience as someone who loves the animated Star Wars shows. Ahsoka, as great as it is, it is only, it's only that good because of the story that was created in Clone Wars and Rebels. If you are, if you didn't watch those shows, Ahsoka gets a serious hit in my book. I think it goes like into the middle. I don't know where I would put it, but I mean, there's so much stuff in the show that just doesn't make sense. Uh... And I remember I, I was really concerned about that when the when the show was being advertised and we were getting the trailers and, you know, Filoni and, and the other actors, they were saying, oh, no, you don't have to. You can you, you can just watch the show as is. And you can. But I mean, it doesn't hit the same. I mean, the search for Ezra and the reunion with Sabine. I mean, getting to see uh, Jason Sindula finally getting to see Thrawn return. I mean, it's and and knowing why the new republic's terrified about him possibly coming back or some of them obviously some of them think it's all just lying and, and well they're going to be uh, in for a rude awakening but none of the, all of that emotional impact just doesn't hit you if you didn't watch the animated shows so personal ranking I'm putting Ahsoka at 1 and Andor in 2 but if I was just someone, you know, more casual fan who'd seen the movies and, you know, I subscribed to Disney Plus for the family and and was, you know, casually watching these shows, I got to put Andor at number one. Because Andor, I mean, what is there to say about Andor? I mean, from a dialogue perspective, it's the best of them all. Um, I, I don't think there can be any question on that. I mean, uh, I think his character is Luthen, um, his monologue about about what the rebellion has to do and and how he has to you know kind of get in the muck and it to it, what's the line that he uses he's condemned to use the tools of his enemy i mean that's that's some top tier dialogue right there um and i'm pretty sure andor was nominated uh for some emmys and it absolutely deserves them um yeah you, you know showing the showing the dark side of the rebellion showing that 
you know, showing the behind the scenes of how the empire functions, seeing how, see, seeing all of that put together and, and done so well. Now, Andor also benefits from the fact that episode wise, it's the longest of all of these shows. And I would like to know why the rest of these shows weren't longer. Ahsoka should have been two episodes longer. Mandalorian season three should have been a little longer. The Book of Boba Fett definitely should have been longer. I mean, like I said, nothing happened in that one. So they, I'd, I'd love to know why Andor got so many episodes and the rest didn't. Um, it was very interesting. I'm looking forward to Andor season two because I know it's going to cover way more uh, time than the first season did. I, th I think Andor season two, they said, is going to cover like five years or something like that. And it's going to go right into Rogue One. Um, so I'm hoping that they can do that well. I'm, I'm certainly trusting them to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and, and something else about that I loved about Andor season one is getting to see the evil Imperials who aren't necessarily Sith, but they believe in the Empire and they're willing to do what they think is necessary to keep the Empire afloat and to crush rebellion that will destroy their way of life as they know it. It's, it's getting to see that moral gray area, something I love in TV shows, and it's something that we don't get to see too much in Star Wars, and that's mainly because George Lucas wasn't really a fan of doing moral gray areas. He's big on the battle between good and evil. So, um, and to a degree, I feel a little conflicted about that because I believe that all of Star Wars should be, should, should at least try to continue his vision of the story, and obviously Andor kind of, you know, the moral gray area breaks that a little. That being said, if, you know, internet rumors are to believe, so take that with a freaking pound of salt. <laughs> um, but I do think this would make sense from what I've read. Uh, Rogue One was George Lucas's favorite thing that's been produced since he sold Star Wars. So I have a feeling, I, I think he would have enjoyed, I think he enjoyed Andor if, if he watched it. I don't know if he did or not, but I could totally see him enjoying it. So... Yeah, I, I, it's weird. I have to have two rankings for this. As a casual viewer, I put Andor at 1, Ahsoka at 2, and then Season 2 of Mandalorian 3, Season 1, 4, Season 3, 5, Kenobi at 6, Boba Fett 7. But as my own personal ranking, I put Ahsoka at number 1, and that's just because of I love Ahsoka. I really love Thrawn. You should see how many Thrawn, you know how many Thrawn videos are on this channel. And if you haven't seen any of them, please check out my channel and watch some of my Thrawn videos. And then... The ranking is the rest for the same. So uh, if you uh, liked this video and you like my ranking, please feel free to drop a like uh, down below. Comment your own personal ranking of the Star Wars live action shows. Uh, let me know um, how you would rank uh, the animated shows in this list. As I said, I'm going to be doing them separately, um, and that video will be coming in the next few days. Um, but I'd be interested to see where you put, how it puts, uh, how it fits all together for you. Um, and also if you, uh, are interested, uh, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. I continue, uh, to make Star Wars content for this channel. I'm going to be making another Thrawn video over the next few weeks that I think will definitely interest you. Um, and with all that said, have a great rest of your day.